The first Bathurst 12 hour was held in 1991. This is the 20th edition of a 12 hour endurance race at Mount Panorama. And after a tough couple of years, the world is back. And the Liqui Moly Bathurst 12 hour fires into life on a stunning Sunday morning at Mount Panorama. A lot of that going on over the next 10 to 15 minutes when these cars brake rotors start to light up. You'll see the cars bottoming out as the tyre pressures come up to temperature. The cars ride height be very, very low. You look, they're weaving as they make their way up Mountain Straight, continuing to try and build tyre temperature before they have their first run across the top of the mountain. They're missing the guys in the late teens and the early 20s coming across the line off the back of the safety car. 10, 15, 20 seconds quicker on that second safety car lap than the guys at the front of the field. So they're working their Pirelli rubber really hard early on. The guys at the front already heading up to the cutting for the first time. That's art, isn't it? <laughs> that is motor racing as art at the Audi Cutting. I, I swear this is the best hour of motorsport Australia gets over the course of the year. BP Ultimate Repay. And then in front of a massive crowd to the top as they head towards McPhillamy and Brock Skyline. Right here as a driver, you don't know what you've got. The first time you're seeing your car across the top of the mountain with low tyre pressure, low tyre temp, Low grip from the circuit in these cool conditions. You have no idea what you have. And Dree Van Thor in the sister WRT BMW going forward in this pack as well. There's a bit oh, going on oh, in the background oh, here, right. though. Vavish. Vavish on Haasa. Looking down the inside. The two out. He's oh, oh, going into turn one. Too early for that, boys. And Ricardo Fellow looking into this as well. Three outings involved in a bit of paint trading there. Oh, my goodness. Well... The gloves are off now, aren't they? I mean, that's... Uh, we're starting to, uh, start to swing the haymakers and we're barely half an hour into this race. Oh, fella around the outside of Haas. He gets it done as well. You can, get, you can get away with going too wide around the outside at turn two early in the day when there's not a lot of marbles on the racetrack, but you do not want to be on the outside at turn two. Haas past Padiachi. Continue to go forward. Oh, that intense battle between the Vish, Fella and half three Audis. Oh, there was one backwards into the wall at two. It's one of the Audis. Audi. It's Haas. That's the pro car. Yes. Oh, Christopher Haas. What that has happened here? Because he does not drop it by himself regularly. He was offline going in to Griffin Bend. Did he jump or was he pushed? Oh, we get it late. There was the multicoloured machine up the inside, the AMG. Yeah, this one will tell us. Ding! Oh, big contact. That's right, that's right rear suspension damage from the hit, I'd say, that guy. Oh, yeah, here we are, on board with half. Oh. Heavy, heavy contact. So... And Alex Davison, the triple two prostate cancer research car. Some safety race tape. Proven at 300 kilometres an hour on Conrod Strait. And all crew members, barring the car controller, have to be back over the red line between the garage and the working line before the car can leave. And is that uh, up at the end of pit lane? There's some stops going on as well. So Maxi goes oh, oh. from second is in, and that's. Chazzy Chaz. on cold tyre. Big moment leaving pit lane. Actually crossed the line, and we need to check the rule book on that one. Oh, hello. But he, that's he's the a M Motorsport Audi. David Crampton at the wheel. That's the exit of turn one. So this car was a late addition to the race. This team entered and practised on Friday in a KTM Crossbow GT2. Blew its engine in practice two. They swapped cars. They leased this car from Melbourne Performance Centre. Uh, on Friday afternoon and got some laps and unfortunately Torian driver is backwards and trying to get this nice car refired, which he's done so. Nice job. Do you know what? There's not much damage on no, the back of that. And it he, hasn't he, even knocked off that. If he's touched that the wall, he's barely touched it. I reckon what was catching David out there and I went down and spent some time with this team when they transitioned from KDM to Audi. He's catch the replay. I wonder if he just got up on the kerb. Oh no, no, just swapped ends on him. And then what do we get here? Oh, there oh, was contact. contact. The front. 
but I, there's, a, there's a function on the steering wheel. You've got to hold down a button for the car to launch and leave. And I was running through that with the team because I go, how do we get this car to move? <laughs> oh, you've got to hold this button down here. You've got to do this, do that. Oh, having a crack is Chazzy up the inside. That's Tony Bates in the 24 Makita AMG. Uh, and oh, oh, look, put up the button. Does he touch the wall? Yes. Oh. And it got it with the rear wing. So they need to be careful with that car. We were talking about those rear wing support braces. And when they get damage or they get contact going sideways, got to be careful. So just snaps on Batesy there, gets the tank slapper going the other way. There's just a little crown on the road there that's yeah. really hard to see. And I think he... Did and he just spin here. up the butt wheels there, Garth, as he was... I putting... think, yeah, just got away from him, just maybe had to change his line as Chaz came up the inside. Big moment oh, up the top of the car for the Porsche. 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 Stephen oh. Groves at the wheel right now. That's right at Skyline, so this will bring a yellow. Safety Have to go safety car, there we go. Flags, safety yeah. car boards this and is going to cause some strategic incident. headaches for those that left there. Let's just check out the replay before I add the update from down in pit lane from on top of Mount Panorama. It's a big oh. fill in, it's in backwards uh, for Stephen Grove. They had a big one here last year. Oh, it's got both sides and the front, so just about every single corner. Oh, oh that car's in the fence, speed in the wall. This is at the top of the mountain. This, and I wonder if it's a side effect oh, of that oh, contact oh, being off the road. Yeah, maybe so a tie down. The rear toe yeah. is out, so it's suspension damage Blake to the rear. right rear of the number six Lamborghini Hurricane. So Up exit the cutting. Audi Sport cutting. Oh, comes into the cutting too hot. Big moment for the Lamborghini with Adrian Dietz behind the wheel. Oh. That's on the run up the hill into the chase. The Scuderia Auto Art chase this weekend. And with that car having been repaired, now I could hear the V10 running. Some big damage to that car though. It's pulled a lot of bodywork. The splitter, the front splitter, the rear diffuser, the rear bumper is hanging off that car. So these cars are very good at going forwards through the air. They don't like going backwards. Oh, oh. And do not approach the chase like that. So Late rear suspension damage. I think that the plate was tucked under. Let it be the other side to where it was damaged before. Yeah. yeah. There's a Kraft Bamboo car in front. Nicky Katzberg behind the wheel. Just running around in 10th position. Last car on the lead lap. So the 47 oh, car oh, spun. Big. And a big crash on the run down the hill. And that is Aaron Cameron from ninth safety position. Safety car boards and flags. Safety car boards and flags. Safety car out for the third time in this race. And this will trigger a rush of pit stops. Everyone was right in their pit window, or just opening. Two cars involved. The 47 Superbarn Supermarkets car. It's Theo Condoras behind the wheel. He's trying to get that car turned around, but the big damage is with the Valmont Racing AMG. They were leading their class, the silver class, and they were running in ninth position outright. I was just, leaders. Yeah, I was just looking right. at Aaron's lap times. He had put together a brilliant stint. And on average, over 32 laps, he was average lap time was only three or four tenths of a second a lap slower than Shane Van Gisbergen. So that was mighty stuff from the 23-year-old. Let's unpick this. The run into the spares box dipper. Oh, they're both backwards. Oh, who oh, was that? that who was... just picked their way through. I think that was the 24 yeah. AMG. Jordan Love at the wheel of that one. Because Farfus, we saw him have a bit of a nibble on the last restart. Amaro Engel wants to be part of all this. He's going to find himself on the wrong side for the run-up Mount Straight. And Sheldon van der Linde will jump in behind his teammate, Augusto Farfus, in the fellow BMW. Does he close the door? He might be able to hold oh, it. touching. <laughs> this just gives a little oh. bit of breathing room. It's a long way oh, round man. the outside. Marbles. It's a long oh, way the round there. The BMWs are in the lane. You called it. Richard, the too soon, and here they are. Got both of the BMWs into their pit box, as well as the Manthai Porsche. There's a driver change going on for the Porsche. That is Jam Jam, Matthew Jamine taking over. And down here for the BMWs, it is Valet getting back behind the wheel of the car. It looked for a moment as though they were just going to use out the Valentino Rossi to do a drinks bottle change. But nope, he brought his own drinks bottle out as Augusto Farfus is strapping him into that number 46 BMW. The next car back is the sister car, the 32. Sheldon Van de Linde out of that car, and it is back to Dries Van Tor. So now all three of those drivers have had an opportunity behind the wheel and an opportunity to rest. Than everyone else. And when you say that and you see the teams and drivers, Garth Tander, that are behind them, 
that is a massive credit to that number 75 team. Oh, one in the wall. Oh, it's right the, in front of the oh, leader. No. It's Lowndes' car. It's Scott Taylor in the triple two AMG. We, when you see that dust come up from the run from Skyline to the Boards dipper, you hold so your breath. And has stayed out. Really? Porsche comes in. And so too does Grupa M's Mercedes AMG. And this is why we're under safety car. A big impact. Scott Taylor behind the wheel. Into the spares box dipper. Very big impact running down the hill. Substantial whack for Scotty. He's been racing in Carrera Cup of late. And that was the dust cloud we saw that Jilgoon on the race leader was driving through. So he was the first one on the scene. Maro Engel and Shane Van Gisbergen, it's dangerously close to the five car length rule that we have here in Australia. You cannot leave a gap more than five car lengths to the car in front. So the car is in pit lane. Shane green flag, green flag. always does. <laughs> Running the rules to the limit. Jules Gunnar will bring us back to the control line and we'll go racing soon. That's the thunder on the restart of the Mercedes AMG leading the Porsche V8 versus flat six. The turbo beamers are in there at the back of this queue. Everyone else has been waved by. So they're at a different part of Mount Panorama now, heading up to the top of the hill. So this is a little pro shootout at the moment for this group of leading cars, seven of them, that are all in contention for this race. Up the inside, Triple Eight car on Philip Ellis behind the wheel of the 77. Shared behind the wheel of the more red Mercedes, if that makes sense, and he oh, might lose oh, the position oh, here. He has, he got offline there, and, and the Helix it. car went straight through. Van der Linde needing no second invitation there. The door was opened, and he got his foot into it immediately. Beautiful, beautiful bit of opportunity. Now, it's a problem. There's got to be a problem for that Triple Eight car. Trying to assess whether there's a problem, or we have seen Shane struggle on the cold tire and safety car restart to get up to speed, but not to this, not to this point. Oh, I wonder if getting offline off like that, yeah. you've just got a heap of pickup on the tire, yeah. perhaps. Best wishes from everybody in the paddock to Lucas uh, Luki, as he is well known by everybody. Very nasty incident uh, at Daytona, and uh, we wish him well and hope he's back in a car. Uh, as soon as possible. Just a few moments ago, position nine, change. Chris Meese taking over at that as he dived down the inside of the end of the chase. The move on Fraser Ross, the 65 Audi. So standard. Audi's continue to yeah. battle. <laughs> standard that is. They do. <laughs> Into the scene battling between the four rings there. Been in the middle of plenty of those battles throughout the course of the race. Past for the Audis. Well, the Race control to all teams. Pit lane drive through penalty to car triple eight for a breach of pit stop procedure. Now, if you ask if we planned that timing, we didn't. And this is why. So we understand it's a breach for equipment use, and there's a mandated use of equipment that can be taken over the red line to work on the car. So to this point, they've done the driver change. They've done the drink bottle. We're doing tyres right now. See at which point of the stop does that take place? There's something going on at the back of the car. There was something going on at the back of the car. And now we're doing that front blanking change that we spoke to Mark Dutton about. Didn't look like there was any hand tools used. In that, but there's a hand tool being used there. Oh, ah, <laughs> oh, and it's, a, it's a breach of the regulations. Uh, tough it, for a, a supercar team that's so used to one set of regs to come in and have to adapt to another one. Not an excuse by any extent, but they do have to adapt to a different set of regulations to what they do do every time. But but it's the rules of the race, and you, you do need to abide by them. They do have a very dedicated. GT team mm -hmm. part of this program, so they'll know the rules. Reports from Brad Schumacher himself that the car feels like it's dropped a cylinder, so they've taken the engine cover off. They are in the bay now, two mechanics trying to figure out. It does sound a bit wonky, listen in. Yeah, it 
sounds a bit like a misfire. It's got too much of a rumble to it. So bad news because they had turned their day around. Yeah, it's a shame. They were third in the Bozell Pro M class. Oh, that's the, that's the telltale sign. Oh, yeah. the uh, universal signal to switch it off. This is the white BMW with the M Sport stripes comes on the pit lane. In very early, gentlemen, as you might notice, uh, well, not very early, but still earlier than it should have been. Augusto Farfus is getting out. Maxime Martin is getting in while the refueling goes on. But you might notice there are those dreaded dolly skates to take the car back into the garage. The scrutineers have deemed that the rear taillights are not working. And so the car must be repaired out on the track at, well, before it can go back out on the track, if you see what I mean there. So the rear taillights are covered by the suit in effect which has come out of the back of the car and now Maxime Martin being told to wait patiently they put the car up on the air jacks they're going to roll it back into the garage clean it off reconnect a plug and then it'll go back out on the track to finish this race but this takes them out of a podium finish of which they were firmly in contention critical moment for this team as they set themselves up for the run to the flag Penultimate pit stop for the leader of the race. But the team well, how did job get wiped out by the yeah. following cars, Pete to be honest. Kept it in the game. It's a bit of a meeting of the minds going on at the back of the garage here at Gripper M. Yes. Now, what's going on here? I just heard that Paul Martin, mm. Bathurst 12 hour, that's Paul there with the headset on from the motorsport operations team is down there talking to this team. So it has got a book with him too. So that generally means you're pointing out some sort of ruling. I confirm now that yeah. there's a data logger issue that is uh, coming through from a number of sources, as Krilzy has said. Now, whether that is something that can be swapped out, whether it's a card collection issue or whether that's live data collection, because some of these cars have, um, the series have, um, Effectively, yeah. And this could be All right. the moment of the motor race this afternoon. Ah, isn't it amazing on the things on which motor races can turn? You cannot fault the drivers at all. You cannot fault what the teams have done. Reliability, potentially, from something, an electronic device, basically, not connected. Forces in. Forces in as well. Oh, so Manti here may respond immediately. I think this is a great move by Manti, covering off what's going on. How's the attack of the pit lane for Campbell oh. getting that thing in? But does it cover off the triple nine car or does it let Gunon off the lead? Clear in air. Clear air. Chad. Guys, they're out of fuel with that Campbell car. They've run 35 laps and the biggest stint of the day in green flag running was 35. So that's just as far as they could get. So that's let Gunon off the leash. It's all happening right now. 68 minutes left to go in this one. They're changing that motor on the Cooper lane. M car in the lane. I wonder whether they got dispensation yeah. or allowance to yeah, do that. Must have checked from race the race officials. So let's keep an eye on the splits for Gunon while these two cars are in the lead. Putting tires on the Cooper M car. What do they do for 912? See them laid out there in the in the shade. This is actually this the is pretty clever for Gripper M because Chad. they're putting tyres on before the fueling, so they can tyre and more them at the same time. Chad. Yeah, well they're going for tyres on that Campbell's car, so not going to roll the dice and try and save themselves the precious 12 seconds. This is a massive advantage to Car 75 that they've taken the time to do this. Campbell's moving, so Campbell's moving. The Gripper M car is up towards mid exit. We'll see it here. Doors being shut. Firing it up, so they'll get out in front. Oh, wow. But that 30-second lead now has been reduced to what is the example, what is the equivalent of about five or six pit bays. He was the school. Campbell at the BMW M elbow. Sun Energy One racing in. Do they put tyres on this car? That's what I was about to say. Do you just fuel only? Have they got tyres laid out, or is that a fair view? Or the do game? you go for track position with 65 minutes to go? and back your man in. If they put tyres on Campbell Leeds. Uh, Engel Leeds. Engel, sorry. Engel Leeds, and it does go on pop in between Engel and Matt Campbell. We know that Gunon was right on the tailpipe of that Porsche when Porsche came to the lane. It's drinking, it's drinking, it's thirsty. He's going, no, no tyres. Oh. They're going to lead the race, Sun Energy 1. The defending champions emerge in front. This lap. 
Guna is coming this time. The moment he starts he's defending, gone for a he's gone. inside, and oh, they're going to call the game. Yes, they are, and they're both off. They're both off. Now the 999 goes through. That was absolutely on the cards from the moment that he pulled out. Now that'll be looked at from race control. New leader as they cross the line will be Maro Engel. <laughs> Teammates a week ago, remember? Teammates. They shared a car to victory at Daytona. Now they crash into each other at Bathurst. So Engel, we'll see it on a replay, no doubt. Yep. But Engel jumped in behind Gunon to make it look like he wasn't going to have a lunch and then stepped out and sent it. Here we go. So just, we need to pick it up earlier he's than there. that. He's not there. He's not oh, there. He's on the Send curb. it up over the curb and that creates contact. I don't think, I don't think that stands. So there's a long way into the corner before contact made Gunon. So... There's been very little of, of that today. Oh, Let's be I honest. I feel like that's the first one. It's this one here. Engel jinx to make it look like he's not going to pass, then sends it diagonally to the apex. We know that he has a braking advantage, a grip advantage, but is it enough to get up the inside there on that particular time? Fair race control. Here we go. Lane drive through penalty to car triple nine for a driving infringement. Pit lane penalty. Big. That's I was big. expecting a that time, goes second. A that time goes second. penalty, if anything. That's what I was getting to the point. If you're Mauro Engel, you put your head down and you hammer it because if time penalty is coming your way, you try and jump in front of the time penalty before the end of the race. But a drive-through penalty changes all that. Drama at the exit of the chase. Craft Bamboo. That's Craft Bamboo racing the MSI AMG. It's mobile. Daniel Juncadella behind the wheel. He was in sixth position. They will give this every opportunity yeah. to turn around under its own steam. If you're Group AM, they're saying that needs to be safety card right now. So <laughs> there's <laughs> lots of different interpretations of what needs to happen, but the car's moving. Turn so 22.2, car trying to resume. So yeah, that's that because the car is moving. Yes. yes. Exactly right, James Taylor saying. Excellent officiate. Yeah, well done. Excellent officiate. And everybody knows. James Taylor's modus operandi is let's keep it green until we absolutely have to, for safety reasons, put the race under safety car. And that's what's happened. Chad? Uh, just a thought, guys. Fans of Formula One will know what a free pit stop means towards the end of the race. If you get a late race safety car and you have a bit of a buffer to the car behind you, you might choose to come in and get some fresh tyres. I'm standing down at BMW and everybody just leapt into action down here because if anyone could get a free kick out of a safety car right now, it could be the car in fourth. They've got a huge gap behind them. They could potentially take a free stop and take the restart fourth in the queue with fresh rubber. And let's just remember that Matt Campbell knows how to do this 2019 front-engined sports car at the elbow and it was elbows out for Matt Campbell as he put it down the inside there was just about a 9-11's width it was probably a 9 10 and a half's width actually there and he went through and eased his way through into the lead on driver's left. The model, the model designation for that car then was 911.1, yeah. wasn't it? That's exactly how much room there was <laughs> to get into that hole. Because I remember watching that live, and that was seriously cool. I think we've seen lots of passing manoeuvres at Forest Elbow. That's the best one we've seen down there. Yeah, that, that's the definition of full scene when you look it up on Google these days. They were down into the chase. There's a car off. In front, it's not one of the leaders. It's the Makita car, Jordan Love, in 11th position. He rejoins right in front of the lead. Bartle needs to stay out of the way. It's going to be worse for Campbell, I think, because he's got a compromised Off entry line. to the final corner. Right. So what have we got lap time-wise? A 3-8 for Gunon, a 4 dead for Campbell, a 3-2 for Maro Engel. The gaps continue to close. Jordan Love jumps out of the way. It is 43 minutes Engel. plus the hour. It's 6.213 times 322 by my maths is 2,000.58 kilometres. Woohoo! 2,000 k's in a day. In half a day. 12 hours. And here's another list for you, gents. This is a list of names that have won three consecutive endurance races, major enduros at this place, in a row. Brock, Richards... Perkins, Lowndes, Win Cup. That's it. In the long history of this place, Jules Gounon is on the edge of doing that. 
last lap. I thought we just clicked over. So it will be 3.23 laps and no further. His time is about to elapse when it's a 43 plus one. This is unbelievable. And I'm not writing off Maro Engel yet. There's two seconds between the top three it's after right a, there. a record breaking distance. And I... with the least intervention from safety cars, this is real racing. This is real pace. This is real drama. It's about Panorama Bathurst. Why do we expect anything different? Does Maro Engel send it at the yes, chase yeah, on the last yes, hundred percent? Hundred percent, he does. The gap is six tenths of a second as they make their way down Conrod Straight for the last time. He's a fair way back. Ah. He, we said he'd get to the rear bumper, but he might run out of time, and time has been his enemy. The fastest race in Bathurst history creates a little bit more. Kenny's engineered another triumph. Lucas Stolls goes back to back. Jules Gunon, three in a row at Mount Panorama. They've done it again. The top three cars are covered by 1.4 seconds. After 323 laps, 2,006 kilometres of racing, 1.4 seconds. And it has delivered in spades. And it's paid the world back, uh, no doubt. Unofficial results then, subject to post-race checks, etc. But Sun Energy won't go back to back ahead of Manti in second and a fast recovering Mercedes AMG team group at M. I wonder if he took that penalty a couple of laps early. It might have been even closer. The team WRT, the best of the BMWs, was the number 32. And in the classes, seventh overall for the 65 car that wins in the Pro-Am Cup for the Sport Bet team. And the silver club, Dylan O'Keefe, I have to apologise to the uh, Milan team. They've been leading so far, so far through the race. They got up into the GT3s and I missed them out of our rundown. They finished 12th okay. overall podium, with mate. the Mazda uh, winning the Invitational. 53,000 people attended this year's event. And there's the celebration. Kenny's finally made it down. The party's at his joint on Conrod Strait tonight. And for the second year in a row, Sun Energy One Racing claim the Liquamoly Bathurst 12-hour.